Hello and welcome to a lecture series on an introduction to discontinuous Galerkin methods. I'm Joshua Bevan, currently a graduate student at the University of Massachusetts at Lowell. This lecture series is split into first four modules. The first module covers the basic structure of DG as well as several of the underpinning th underlying theories that are required to build a first solver. First, let me cover the overall structure of the lectured series. There are several prerequisites in terms of knowledge assumed about the viewer. First, the usual assumptions about a background in calculus, linear algebra, and some ODE and PDE experience is assumed. Additionally, it's assumed that the viewer has some degree of programming ability, ideally MATLAB. However, if they have prior programming experience, the, mat the syntax for MATLAB isn't too difficult to learn. Finally, it's assumed that the viewer has taken two courses, one in a numerical methods course covering approximation and quadrature and things like that, as well as a course on the solution of PDEs. It may be a domain-specific course, or it could be a general overview of the various uh, techniques for solving PDEs numerically. It's also worth noting that this lecture is not intended to teach common underlying techniques, such as interpolation, for example. But when those techniques come up, if there's important features that we need to consider, then we may make special note of them. Here's a list of some of the prerequisites assumed from a numerical methods class. Don't worry if you don't necessarily have all of these, but a fair smattering of them is necessary for a full high-order solver. Additionally, here are some prerequisites assumed in terms of a solutions of PDE's course. Again, you don't necessarily have to be an expert in all of these uh, various techniques, but an underlying familiarity with at least a couple of them will provide an interesting motivation behind why somebody would potentially use DG. Here's a listing of the various goals that ultimately would be achieved with the lecture series. The four top line points are to understand the DG spatial discretization, be able to then take the semi-discrete system and apply it to time discretization, learn how to apply DG to arbitrary PDEs in the, their various realms of applicability, with sub-goals here being essentially that you're not locked down to one particular PDE that you understand the overall methodology inherent in, in DG as a solver, and then finally to generate runnable code of your own. As previously stated, this lecture is split into four modules. We'll briefly go over each module now so that if you'd like to skip ahead to a topic of interest, you could do so. Module 1, this module, covers the overall DG technique as well as some underlying theory that needs to be developed. We'll work through the weak form derivation and then create a local element which we'll then recover into a global solution. Module 2 develops a simple one-dimensional linear solver. We'll use a linear solution approximation and then develop the mass and stiffness matrices and then ultimately assemble the linear system. We'll then use a simple forward Euler time discretization to complete the method. We'll then investigate how this behaves. The first part of module 3 covers the solution approximation. Solution approximation has many pitfalls and more naive approaches may suffer from various numerical errors or failures for conversions, etc. So we will ultimately develop a robust higher order solution approximation. Finally, in the second part of module three, we will cover the rest of the discrete system. We will use our methodology developed for the higher order solution approximation to examine what's necessary in terms of both quadrature as well as mapping, followed by developing the mass and stiffness matrices and some of the potential pitfalls there as well. Finally, we'll assemble the system into a, the semi-discrete system and then apply a more advanced RK4 time discretization. We'll then also investigate the order conversions, which we previously could not in the low order solver. Before we move on to the main matter of the lectures series, it's worth making a pedagogical comment about the nature of these lectures. Because they are a video format, you should take full advantage of your ability to pause or speed up the lecture as necessary. On the YouTube player in the settings menu, you can speed up and slow down the playback of the lecture. So if I'm going too fast or too slow, you can adjust it to your taste. Additionally, although each section may have several subsections, each overall section is intended to be a self-contained concept. 
You can tell when the start of a new section happens because the slide title will have a bolded title for the section followed by the subsection. It's easy to continue to watch video after video without realizing that you're not actually getting the important concepts of the video. So I would recommend before moving on to a new section to try to put what you've learned into action from that particular section. You should be able to generate some sort of code snippet or play with some mathematics to verify a particular claimed result. Finally, each module is also self-contained, but in a larger sense and you should be able to put together something more substantial once you've completed a module. You should be able to hopefully have a fully runnable solver after module 2, and then after module 3a, you should be able to have a higher order approximation and interpolation routine, followed by finishing module 3b, you should have a full-blown higher order one-dimensional solver. Before moving on to develop the theory of DG, let's first ask ourselves why somebody might use DG over more common methods. First, think about why somebody would use any of these techniques. Ideally, we'd like to solve a PDE numerically that describes some sort of physical system. The more accurately and quickly we're able to solve it, the better. In the context of this comparison, we'll be thinking about how any of the more common techniques scale with respect to increasing the order of the solution. We're interested in this because typically increasing the order of the solution can be a more efficient method, especially for smooth functions. Most commercial packages are lower order. First, start with finite differences. It's worth noting that finite differences is not explicitly conservative, and to move to higher order, you need to use an extended stencil, which can be difficult to use for unstructured grids. Finite element methods easily extend to high order, but they're not very good for hyperbolic problems, and discontinuities in the solution are also troublesome. Finally, finite volumes give you a constant solution across the volume, so in order to move to higher order you would need to move to an extended stencil similar to finite differences. At low order they support unstructured grids quite nicely, but in order to move to higher order it ruins this flexibility. So what does DG do better than the others? Well, DG is explicitly conservative, and it's also well suited for hyperbolic problems. It's able to handle discontinuities, and you can still use unstructured grids even at higher order. Additionally, the local nature of the solution permits good parallelizability for more complex problems. And then finally, you're able to use numerical flux functions, like you can in finite volumes, to capture the underlying physical behavior of the system.